What's up, live? Check in, check in. It's your boy JT Hustles back again. Uh, I've missed a few days, right? And I'm going to tell you guys why it's part of this live chat as well. Well, I'll go and tell you guys now. I'm spending time with my daughter. Um, as you get to this live chat, please hit that thumbs up button. Comment where you're watching this from. Uh, we're going to wait a couple of seconds so YouTube can send out my notifications so anybody that's interested in watching this video can actually watch this video. Um, the title of this video is, uh, you know, gets us straight to the point of what we're going to be talking about here, how I plan on getting my five-year-old daughter, or by the time she's five, getting her up to $40,000 a year. Um, this is in reference to the post that I made on my Instagram. My Instagram is JT Hustles, just like this YouTube's channel name is. And um, I also made that post on the community tab of YouTube. So you can see in both places there that um, I took a picture with her and made that post as well. So um, got a lot of love. Appreciate everybody for the love. Got a lot of hate, surprisingly, on a baby. Right. So um, but always I usually just ignore it. But um, the reason why I wanted to make this video is not to, you know, uh, really attack any hate or anything like that. I do understand that some people just may not understand certain things. They may not be exposed to certain things. So this video is for those people's benefits to check this out. So before we get into it, I also want to let you guys know, been getting this message a lot. Plans Bootcamp for the year has sold out as far as live events go. The online course is available in Hustle Academy anytime, whenever you guys want to. And um, I'll put a link down in the comment section for that. The cell phone repair class is going on this weekend. The next one is the last weekend in September. If anybody wants to come to that live event, that online course is also available in Hustle Academy as well. So those are just some brief housekeeping notes I wanted to get into. Appreciate all 19 people that's here. Hit that thumbs up button. Comment where you're watching this from as always. Any questions, comments, concerns you have, put it in the live chat and we will address it at the end of this uh, video, just like we do in all the other live streams. So currently my daughter is two years old. So I have three years uh, to, to keep my word, if you will, to get her up to at least $40,000 a year. Now I know what a lot of parents say, and I'm one of those parents as well that say, you know, whatever I have, my children have, right? So I'm not saying that, okay, JT Hustles is gonna make $40,000 a year. And now his daughter makes $40,000 a year. I was uh, specifically talking about her making her own money, right? And when I say making her own money, this is different from me saying that, okay, she's going to work a job, right? I don't even encourage you guys, the Hustle family, to work a job. All of the content on this channel is about operating your own business, which is different than working a job for somebody else. So I... I teach her the same thing I share with you guys as well. So uh, the fact that she's two years old uh, is is a, a non-issue at this point in time, right? Jaden Smith is 21. I'm 29. He's worth $8 million. I'm not, right? The reason for that is because his parents set him up at an early age so that he could be here, right? And we all aren't going to be Jaden Smith, but the whole point of using that example is to let you guys know that as a parent, or even if you're not a biological parent of somebody, if there's a young person that you care about and that you want to see do well, try to set them up with the information, right? That's, you know, always important, but also the tangible side of it as well, right? So I'm referencing my notes here. You guys know I write everything down because I'll forget with everything I have going on. So uh, I'm not trying to convince anybody to think I'm cool or anything like that. So if this is the first video you're watching and you're expecting to get convinced on that, this is not that kind of channel. This video is more so for those people that are interested in what my plan is so you can replicate it or create your own for your uh, people that come in behind you, that's all it is for, right? So you don't have to agree with what I'm doing or believe in it or anything like that. It doesn't change the facts. I wanna encourage everybody, whether you're watching this video live or you catch this video after the fact, to be that generation of change so that the people that come after you can not only think differently, but live differently, right? So uh, maybe you had to struggle, maybe your parents had to struggle, but a certain generation has to say, okay, I'm going to be the sacrifice. I'm going to be the one that's going to work hard, invest my money, lose money, learn the business, try it again, and then build something. And I'm going to be the change that my family needs, right? So if your dad worked at a plant, your granddaddy worked at a plant, now you work at a plant, 
It's nothing wrong with that, but you guys can also be real estate entrepreneurs or own a transportation company or do way more than just work at the plant, right? But it has to start somewhere. And if none of us ever, you know, take advantage and saying, hey, I'll be the sacrifice. I'll be that generation of change that's going to try businesses. We're not going to always succeed at all of them. We're going to learn. We're going to try again. And we're going to definitely figure it out in my lifetime. So my kids, grandkids, nieces, nephews, all of those people behind me can say, OK, Uncle JT, Granddad JT, Pops JT, uh, you know, set this set this up for us so we don't got to start from zero like we did. Right. Um, let, let's talk about some numbers real quick. Right. Uh, one number is three years. Right. So that's the time I'm giving myself. My daughter turns two September 13th. Right. Um, which is depending on where you're watching, this may already be after the fact. But that is next month as of the time of this live stream. So I have three years to get her up to forty thousand dollars a year, which uh, is not a lot of money. Honestly, you guys, I think the math on it is like uh, did I write it down like nineteen twenty three. $19.23 an hour is $40,000 a year. I do empathize or uh, empathize with those people who say that, you know, you could be 40 years old and making $40,000 a year. I want to encourage you to start thinking about things this way, that your truth may not necessarily be the truth, right? So, uh, and, and we can elaborate on that if need be, but I'm going to leave it out there. And if somebody doesn't understand it, we'll get back into it. But at 22 years old, 22, 23, uh, I was out of the military and finishing up college. And it took me that long to uh, start making $40,000 a year for the first time. I was still in the work environment at that. So I didn't make $40,000 or more until I was 22. Uh, some people may say they didn't make that much until they was 29, till they was in their 30s, till they was in their 40s, right? And just because you made it later in life doesn't mean that other people can't make it sooner. So I think that's the first thing that we have to understand that, hey, my kids can be set up. It doesn't take them 20 years, 30 years, 40 years. It could, but it doesn't necessarily have to be. There are things that we can do proactively for the people that's coming behind us so that they can get where we are way sooner, right? But if our kids can start at 500,000 instead of zero, maybe they can get us to a million or two million or three million of things of that nature. So the first thing I want you guys to understand is that your truth and the truth doesn't have to be the same thing. My truth was at 22 years old, that's the first time I made $40,000 or more. You might not have made that much money at 22. You might have made it at 32, right? So me saying my daughter can make it at five, right, is not any less true. Um, Let's go through some other numbers, right? I haven't even been doing YouTube two, two years yet. Right. So by me giving myself three years to set my daughter up, it's a verifiable track record here on YouTube that how many testimonies have we had? You can read the comments underneath the videos. It's a lot of them because it's a lot of videos. We got a whole playlist of video testimonies. Right. So uh, you can go back and YouTube will let you sort by my oldest video. My very first video was done November 2017. So this November will make two years that I've been on YouTube. I've helped hundreds of people create businesses uh, and establish way more than that, establish multiple income streams for themselves, like little side hustles and things of that nature. So it is realistic that you can change somebody's life in a drastic way in three years or less, regardless of their age. People that watch this channel are anything from teenagers to senior citizens, right? So anybody can have their life changed in a short amount of time. So if I'm able to do that for people that watch this channel in less than two years, I'm sure I can set my daughter up in three years. Right. It's just the reality of the situation. It's a proven track record. Right. Um, let's talk about her current income streams. When I say her current income streams, this is a uh, one is partly mine, but the other one is 100 percent hers. She has a Macari store. This is 100 percent baby hustles. Macari store. If you don't know what Macari is, it's sort of like Amazon or eBay. It's not as big as Amazon or eBay yet. Maybe one day it will be. But um, as many of you guys know, I'm a reseller online. I have my own eBay and Macari store. She also has her own Macari store, right? Where you can resell things, whether it be new, used, or whatever the case may be, right? Uh, M-E-R-C-A-R-I is the spelling of it. You can download that app if you want to add it to your repertoire 
of platforms that you sell stuff on if you're a reseller or just would like to sell anything at all, right? What do we sell in Baby Hustle's uh, reselling store, her Macari store, right? Literally just her old stuff. Any of you guys that have small children or have had small children know that children at a young age, they grow very fast, right? So you can buy an outfit this month and next month, it might not fix them. It might not fit them two months from now, even more than likely won't fit them next year. Definitely ain't going to be able to fit them. They ain't even going to get their head through the top of it by then, right? Whereas us as an adult, you might you might be the same size for three, four years and can wear, you know, that same shirt. Doesn't work like that for kids. So me personally, I like to buy my daughter nice things. Uh, and, and again, that's a personal thing. Not saying that you have to do this for your kids. My whole psychology on that, just to share it with you guys, the Hustle family is, uh, my daughter's going to have nice things. You could call it spoiled. It is what it is. My whole uh, idea is that I want her to be a, a mature young lady one day that's not easily impressed by the first guy that takes her out to eat the nice restaurant or buys her flowers or buy her a nice purse or things of that nature. I want her to genuinely be interested in good people, regardless of the amount of money they have. So me personally, as a dad, I go out and we got true religion outfits, polo outfits, buy flowers, all that other stuff. Not saying that anybody else has to do that. Just telling you guys, that's what I do. That stuff, like I said, she quickly outgrows that. And then I have to go buy more stuff, right? So we resell all her old clothes. She might have wore a true religion outfit one time. It was a hundred and something bucks. So maybe we sell it now. It's still brand new or been worn once for $60, $50, whatever the case may be. All in all, that's pretty much where we get the inventory from. So usually I buy her clothes all the time. She outgrows it. We sell her old toys her old clothes. And, you know, sometimes just like in any reselling business, any reseller will tell you that uh, there's highs and lows. So um, I don't know if there's a particular time in the U.S. where people have more babies, but it's noticeable. Sometimes uh, throughout the year, it takes off. Other times it's steady on a bad month. Maybe she'll make three, four hundred dollars a month on a good month. Maybe she'll make eight, nine hundred dollars a month just selling baby clothes that are in great condition and toys that she didn't destroy. So it'll just be toys that are still in good condition, but she's just over it. You guys know how kids are. So she has a Macari store and that is where we get the inventory from. It's literally clothes she can't wear anymore that are still in good condition toys that she I bought her she don't want no more so we just sell them and that pretty much finances pretty much everything she needs daycare more clothes pampers snacks things of that nature second business she has is something uh that's with me so we do it as pretty much you can call it a joint venture business partners whatever the case may be um and this is what's actually making her money and that's um books right so she's on the cover of my first book she's the co-author of that on this book right? She's the co-author of this, right? It's literally, you open it up, right? The author is JT Hustle. The co-author is Baby Hustles, right? So she's the co-author of both of my books. And uh, I consider myself to be an author, right? I, I enjoy writing. So she's going to be the co-author of every book I ever write, right? And I'm not one of those parents that say, okay, yeah, you're the co-author, but don't give her any money, right? So if me and you do something together, half of whatever comes out of that is yours, right? So that's how we do it. Those are the two income streams that she has right now that are hers, right? So she has a bank account and her Macari stuff is deposited from Macari to there, right? And uh, her half of the book royalty, right? And those of you that took my book writing course in Hustle Academy, you guys already seen my numbers and they've been gradually increasing since then. So, you know, it's good money in writing books. I encourage you guys to do it. So again, those are two income streams that are hers, right? Her Macari store is literally her clothes selling and her toys selling, right? Yes, I'm working for her. However, that doesn't take away from her business, right? There are lots of people out there who have businesses that have people working for them. So that doesn't discredit the idea that they're a business owner, right? If you hire me to work for you, that doesn't make you any less of a business owner. It actually makes you a smarter business owner. So don't try to discount her on that. So she resells stuff online as the business owner, right? And she's the co-author of two books. And we're working on quite a few books uh, here together. And uh, uh, one time somebody asked me, you know, how can you legitly 
justify her being the co-author, right? I hustle so hard because I have a daughter, right? So she is my muse, or if you don't know what that means, she's my inspiration, right? Not to insult anybody's intelligence, but I get that sometime in the comment section. So I'm just going to, you know, tell you, you know, she's my inspiration. I wouldn't be out here trying to create all these businesses and all these income streams if it was just me, honestly. Like as many guys know out there, we easy to please, right? Pay our bills, can hang out and relax with the fellas. You know, like it doesn't take a lot for me to be satisfied. But having a, a, a daughter motivates me, right? Especially she's an African-American young lady will grow into a beautiful woman, right? I want her to be set up because she might not have the same opportunities as me or as any man uh, in the open market. So I'm trying to do my best to set her up. So, you know, she has it not as hard as if, you know, somebody that doesn't set their kids up or walks out of their life at an early age, right? So now how much money does she make? Approximately 900 to $1,000 a month. Reason why it's not a flat rate any month, uh, every month is because, like I said, things can resell differently, whether it be her clothes and toys or the books, right? So it's not like, oh, uh, 10 people buy something from the store every month, 10 people buy a book every month, right? It fluctuates. So depending on what sales and, you know, what... Uh, the, the books, the toys, the clothes sale, that's what it is. And I'm telling you guys profit, right? When it comes to a reselling business, there's shipping costs, there's fees, there's things of that nature. So the gross number will be way higher. But I'm talking about profit. She can go buy, you know, snacks with, right? If she had a debit card, it's around $900 to $1,000 a month, right? Not a lot, not a lot. The math on that breaks down to, if she was working for it, $5.77 an hour. Not a lot of money. I'll be the first one to admit that. However, at two years old, $5.77 is, is good. I think it's good. It's more than what I had at two years old and more than what most of us had at two years old when we didn't even know what money was or anything like that. So now let me talk about my realistic plan. Again, we already established my truth and your truth may be different, but my realistic plan to get her up to $40,000 a year by the time she's five. Right. I have a video on this channel. It's in the businesses for women's playlist where one of my mentors, actually my only female mentor, she owns daycare centers. She does very well with daycare centers. She's been telling me for years that I should open up a daycare center before I had a daughter. I was like, nah, I'm a guy. Guys don't have daycare centers. You know, I had a very closed mind and it wasn't an interest to me now since I had a daughter. Right. Me and her have been talking way more and we've actually been looking for a building. So I haven't uploaded on YouTube in the past few days. I posted pictures of my daughter. I've been with my daughter. I've actually taken her with me to look at buildings again. You know, some people don't even understand this because they're you know, you from a different time. You were taught a, a brought up a different way. Not saying that it's a bad thing, but at an early age, I'm trying to instill in her uh, confidence and empower her and let her know, hey, you could be a business owner at any age, right? So do I need her to ride with me in her car seat to look at daycare centers? Absolutely not. But this is just something that I'm going to do her entire life, right? I'm going to take her with me, whether she knows what's going on or not. And one day she will know what's going on, right? So at two years old, you know, all she wants to do is listen to baby sharks on my phone. But at 15 years old, she'll know, okay, this is a building we're looking at. This is the goal. This is what I see for it. And, you know, this is what I want it to be for you. Right. So we're doing it already at two. We're actively looking for buildings. Buildings are not that expensive, believe it or not. The building that we were looking at, I think, was over thirty eight hundred square feet. It was only twelve hundred and fifty dollars a month. And what we're going to do with that building is a daycare center. Right. So, again, I have somebody that's been in the daycare business since the 80s made a ton of money. She wants to expand her daycare center. And she also encourages me, just like I encourage you guys to expand as an entrepreneur and has been telling me, hey, open up a daycare center. You can own it. You don't have to run it, things of that nature. And now that I have a daughter, I'm absolutely, hey, we're going to open up a daycare center. It's going to 100% be my daughter's daycare center. I'm going to find the building. I'm going to make the initial investment. And the beauty about daycare centers, not going to turn this into a whole daycare center video, is that uh, daycare centers make money before you even open them. And I'll just briefly go into that and then we'll move on. Right. So how this lady has been doing it since the 80s. 
right? And now has one of the top daycare centers in her part of South Carolina, got awards and all that stuff for it. When you come into the daycare center and you say, hey, my daughter baby hustles, needs child care. Uh, is there any room here, right? She'll say yes. If there is room, you'll fill out an a application. On this application, it has her name, her allergies, point of contact if there's an emergency, right? It's a whole standard form of everything that she needs uh, from you in order to have this child in case there's ever a situation, right? She charges an application fee, right? Reason why she justifies charging that application fee is one, that's the norm in her area. Wherever you go, there's an application fee. But two, also the state, uh, at least in the Carolinas, you can do the research in your state. The state dictates how many kids can fit in a building and also how many uh, workers can manage how many kids. So if the state says you can only fit 50 kids in this building, right? You paying this fee secures your kid one of those spots. Because if you don't pay that fee and somebody else comes behind you and pays the fee and now she reaches 50 kids, your kid cannot legally be in that building. It's against the law. It's a fire hazard, whatever they say, based off of the square footage and the number of workers, she can't have any more kids. So lots of parents know that, at least in this area. So they say, OK, I'm going to pay this fee. This fee can range from whatever is whatever you want the fee to be. Some daycare centers is twenty five dollars. Some is fifty dollars. Some is one hundred dollars. Right. And that's before your kid stays one day at the daycare. You come into the building you check it out. You can do a little tour of it. OK, I would like my kid to be here. OK, fill this out. I need to know their name, allergies, point of contact, things of that nature. It's also a hundred dollar fee, twenty five dollar fee, fifty dollar fee. You base your numbers, I guess, based off of your market. If you're in a major city, you could charge more than if you're a rural town. However, everybody needs child care services. And this is uh, what I feel to be what we call a recession proof business. Right. Everybody wants a recession proof business. Right. So whether the economy is good or bad. You still have to work and provide for your family. Many of us need child care. Right. So that's going to be a business that I see for the foreseeable future. Like like I said, we're looking at a building that's a little over three thousand square feet. It's only twelve hundred and fifty dollars a month. Right. And uh, tentatively, uh, we still have to get the fire marshal and people out there. We're thinking that we can get close to 100 kids in that building. Right. So let's do some quick math real quick. Right. Um, let's say. 100 kids. Again, this doesn't happen overnight. I'm not saying we're going to open today. 100 kids are going to be in there tomorrow. But, you know, let's say we build it up and it grows until it's at capacity, which is possible. If 100 kids pay $25 just for the application fee, that's already $2,500. The rent and utilities per month is less than $2,500 at the building that we're renting. Right. And that's not the weekly fee. That's just twenty five dollars. Your kid has a spot. See you Monday. See you tomorrow. Whatever the case may be. And this is not my opinion. This again, you can go watch the video on the playlist of the woman who has been doing it since the 80s. And she's also mentoring me and is going to probably be the lead saying, OK, this is what you need. Like you need a fireproof door for the baby room because they can't walk. You need this many key. I mean, you need this many employees for this many workers. Right. So what I love about daycare centers is one, you make money before you even take in the kids. Right. Two, they make money every week. Right. Most child care facilities, you got to pay for it every single week. They're going to make money uh, without putting out too much of her information. She makes well into the six figures with her daycare center. So easily the profit off of that, though, again, she makes well into the six figures. Her profit is probably on a bad year. Right. Sixty to eighty thousand on a good year, somewhere in the six figures. Right. And this is in South Carolina. This isn't in New York City or California or Seattle. One of those places that have, you know, crazy high cost of living. So people expect to spend you know, crazy amounts of money in childcare every week. And the Carolinas, while it may not be the cheapest place in the world, it's less expensive than other parts of the United States. Right. So definitely if she can make 60 to 80 grand profit, right. I put my daughter's, uh, well, not even her name, right. I encourage you to set up an LLC or a business, right. So her LLC receives the money, goes into the trust account. It's her money. Right. And then once she's of age, then she'll have a decision do I want to go off to college and do something else in life? Do I want to go to the military or uh, do I just want to run my own daycare center? Right. Because she can go off and do whatever it is she wants to do in life and 
have people run her business back home or she can say, OK, I like kids at two years old. You don't know if you like kids uh, enough to own a daycare center or not. Right. And I'm not going to be standing up in a daycare center because I wouldn't take my daughter to a daycare that was uh, full of men running it. So it's going to be a daycare center already ran by mature women getting paid a fair wage that's doing the business the right way. And she'll decide if she wants to get in there or she wants to continue uh, having it operating in the way it's been operating all of these years, right? If she does do that, yeah, she could take a little bit more money home uh, as the director instead of paying somebody to be the director of her facility, right? So that is one business in and of itself. And again, giving myself three years by the time she's five, the building, we're looking at the building now. It's only $1,250 a month, right? I invest $1,250 if the fire marshal and everybody, we still got to get some approvals, right? So it's more technical than what I'm giving you in this video. Whole point of this video is to expose to you guys how possible it is to set up your kids by giving you my truth, right? So just for simpler, to simplify it, fire marshal goes through, gives us the thumbs up or says, change this, this, and this, and it could be a daycare center. We do that. We sign the lease. Before we even uh, watch the first kid for the first day, we do an open house, get a bounce house, play music, have people sign up, and it's going to pay for itself, right? Pay for itself. Those are just some of the things that I learned about the daycare center business from her. Second business, right, since we beat that dead horse, you guys already know that now. We're going to co-own a fish breeding business, right? If you saw one of the posts that I made on Instagram as well, I told you guys, you know, give me uh, birthday ideas for a two-year-old. I know she loves fish. Every time she come home or come to the house, she, she's banging on the glass and I got to get her and she wants to put her hands in the, in the glass and catch the fish. So she, she does have a genuine interest in fish, right? And, and, you know, and talks about wanting to get more all the time, right? So we're going to co-own that. Again, that's going to be 50-50. Now, what I will tell you, like I tell everybody, I won't tell you to get into the fish breeding business or open up a fish store if you're not passionate about it, right? It's not a good business. No business is good if you're not passionate about it, but definitely not fish breeding or, or fish store, right? It's a passion of mine. It's becoming an interest of hers. So it makes sense. Now this, unlike the childcare center, is not something that I'm going to tell you is a recession proof business. If the economy crashes, maybe people don't want to go out and buy high end fish and stuff of that nature. However, uh, the track record of fish stores, they have been doing very well for many, many years. So it is a good business to have. That's not going to be, you know, her primary business. Uh, my vision will be the child care service on top of her reselling business, on top of the business that we'll own together, which is her co-authoring my books and being the co-owner of my fish store. And as soon as she's, you know, a teenager, she's going to be cleaning tanks, doing water changes, all of that good stuff. Right. So. Definitely want to share that with you. Another idea that I have to just throwing it out there is that um, and I'm not as fluent in real estate as I want to be. I'm actually learning that as I go to. You'll see a video about that here uh, real soon. Uh, there is a way that in real estate, the owner of the land and the owner of the building doesn't have to be the same person. Right. So there's a technical way to do it. It's legal. Uh, if you are in an area and you know some people that live in trailer homes, uh, it's very common in trailer homes, but it doesn't have to be just in trailer homes where uh, somebody that owns the lot or on the land doesn't own the building that's on the land. Right. And uh, the, the technical term slips my mind as of right now. But uh, me getting into real estate. Right. If I can legally structure it that way, uh, which is why I'm not going to say it's something that's 100 percent going to happen yet. Uh, if I can legally do it, I'm going to structure it that as I invest in real estate, I own the building. She owns the land. Right. Uh, the building is going to depreciate uh, as you know, time goes by. Right. But the land should hold its value or increase in value. And that's going to be another income stream. Right. So if JT Hustles gets a rental property. Right. And somebody pays rent, I'm going to pay lot fee, even though I bought the land to my daughter. And the whole vision is, you know, none of us are going to live forever, right? None of us are going to be, you know, as energetic as we are now, right? Forever. So, you know, setting up those people that's coming behind you. I encourage everybody to be that generation of change that changes not only the way people think, but the people, but the way that people live coming after you. So of course, I'm going to educate her. I'm a teacher about business. Say, hey, this is what I recommend. This is what you should do. 
Uh, she loves reading books now, right? And uh, again, I think that's a big flaw that many of us have. I even had it for many years, right? Because our association of books is that you only read a book that you don't like to take a test that you don't want to take so that you can go to the next grade and not understanding that reading does increase your vocabulary, your intellect and your earning potential. So she loves to read. She loves fish. Right. And I'm going to keep on instilling uh, things in her so that, yes, she knows how to think and how to be a great person. But also I'm going to give her tangible things because I've had people when I was a young man coming up saying, oh, go to school, make good grades. You'll make a lot of money. This and that gave me all of the right encouragement, uh, taught me a lot of good things. But I still had to start from zero same way they had to start years ago from zero as well. So by being uh, that generation of change, yes, I want to teach her stuff, but I also want to give her something tangible like the reselling business, like the book. She can actually hold this book in her hand and says, you know, dad helps people become entrepreneurs. Uh, some people invest in books. And when they do, I get a piece of that. Or, you know, uh, dad invested in a daycare center. I can go to that daycare center, which she will. Right. And in the same daycare center that she came up in is her daycare center one day. Right. And again, the, the plan is not to always rent out a building as well. We're going to rent it at first. Because again, this is a new business for me. I don't want to commit to a mortgage or commit to even buying an inexpensive building in uh, you know, two years from now, for whatever reason, we say we need to go in another direction, right? I don't forecast that being uh, the case. However, I still want to, you know, do it the smart way. So definitely biggest takeaway from this, sharing you guys my truth, uh, let you guys know that it is possible. It is possible. Even if you don't have $1,250 right now to rent out a building and create a daycare center for your daughter, right? You can save up your money. Doesn't have to happen today. Doesn't even have to happen this year, right? You can set them up, create businesses for them. Daycare centers don't have to be your thing. I love online businesses. They can have an online reselling business. They can have an online private label business. If you don't want to sell anything, if you think your kids are funny and just uh, entertaining, right? then you can make a YouTube channel of them. How many kid YouTubers out there that are making way more money than I am, right? So definitely there's a lot of different avenues you can take. So there is no limit. I'm just giving you guys examples from my life. And I want to encourage everybody out there. It is possible regardless of the age of your kids, right? So there you have it. I'm going to run through this chat briefly. And then um, I have to get on the road today. Uh, so you guys will see another video uh, probably this evening. Uh, shout out to Nashville, Tennessee. Shout out to Atlanta. Uh, shout out to the DMV. What's good? Uh, generational wealth. Absolutely. Every generation should do better than the last. Absolutely. Absolutely. But I think, you know, um, it, it comes from that previous generation. So if, if my generation doesn't teach my daughter anything, then she has to start from zero and figure everything out on her own. So I do believe every generation should do better than the last. But it is our responsibility uh, to teach, you know, Kids, if you have kids, if you don't have kids, you got little cousins, nieces, nephews, just put them up on game. Put them up on game. JT, what's up, my brother? What's up, Isaiah Robinson? Uh, hey, y'all, checking in from Detroit. Shout out to Detroit. Glad you posted the links. I've been looking for those. Absolutely. Appreciate that, BK from the Rockies, uh, for posting the links. Um, greetings, brother JT. What's up? What's up? Boss man style. UK in the house. Legacy in the making. Shout out to the UK. Appreciate you being here. That's a great idea. Uh, again, you know, everything that I'm doing is possible for everybody. Right. You know, if it's not an interest of you, I'm not saying that you're limited to doing just what I'm doing. But I do want to expose to you what's possible and you can do whatever you want to set up your kids and, and the people that's coming after you. Love that King. Like, share and or subscribe if you're enjoying the discussion. Absolutely. Absolutely. Appreciate that. Uh, it does help the channel out a lot. Facts showing them the way. Uh, starting my daughter uh, drink company. She's sick. Shout out to you, Sparkle B. Uh, man, that's amazing. Uh, man, keep me updated. I'm JT Hustles on all social media, right, man? So that's amazing, man. Started my daughter's drink company. She's six. Absolutely. Absolutely. So there is no age requirement. I think what lots of times people think is that you got to be working in order to make money, right? You can't set up a business and make money. But then if you think about it in a broader scale, uh, if you work at Verizon, there's a good chance that the owner of Verizon, unless you're at the corporate office somewhere, uh, or the CEO of Verizon works with you on a daily basis, yet you're making them money. But I think lots of times 
we're caught up in our own life and we think, okay, you can't make money unless you work in a job uh, 40 hours a week or part time. That's the only way to make money. So uh, oftentimes we don't even think about setting up our kids when they're young. You start thinking about it. Okay, now you 15, get a job. Right. And save your money and do things of that nature. And now uh, it, not saying that anything's wrong with that if you're that person. But compare that 15 year old that's just now getting introduced to making money, saving money and what to do to, to my daughter. Right. My daughter, who was making money before she could walk. By the time she's 15, there's no telling what her cap will be. And now your kid is competing with other kids like that. Right. If they're in the same industry, not saying that there is not enough money. Your kids can do way better than my kids, way better than any other kids. However, you are putting them at a disadvantage by limiting them, saying you can't start today. You got to start when you can physically go to the grocery store and bag groceries yourself. Right. When that's not the case, it, it can be something small. Like I said, right now, she's only making a thousand dollars a month. For many of you guys is watching this video, thousand dollars a month. You can't pay your bills. Uh, and, and live a sustainable life at $1,000 a month. But if you started at $1,000 a month at two, while somebody was still paying all of your bills, taking care of you, and it grew from there, you might be in a totally different situation now, right? And it was no fault of theirs. They just, you know, did what they thought was best. So I'm encouraging you to be that generation now to say, I'm going to take the, I'm going to take up the ball and I'm going to push the needle forward for my kids and those that come after me. Um. They recognize you'd be surprised what they observe, absorb. Absolutely. Absolutely. So, again, I know my daughter can say anything that she hears somebody else says. But um, again, I don't know if she's going to remember all of this or anything like that. But the whole point of the matter is, you know, um, I'm going to expose her to it. Right. So I'm going to expose her to it. She's going to, you know. She's stumbling around the building, right? Don't know what it is, but, uh, you know, she doesn't even know that she's potentially walking around her first daycare center, right? So I'm just exposing her to stuff, talking to her about different stuff, right? I'm not uh, trying to snatch away her childhood, right? Uh, she still plays and does stuff with regular kids her age, but I'm also want to encourage her like, hey, you don't have to work a job if you don't want to, right? You can be an entrepreneur. That's something that wasn't told to me growing up. Right. Uh, entrepreneurship was thought to be too big of a risk or a scam or things of that nature. Um, I love your videos. Give great advice. Appreciate that. Uh, vibes from Cola. I apologize if I mispronounced your name. Also, the application fee for a child care home can be varied by the max number of kids accepted and rating of the facility, a home that keeps a small number of kids and has a high rating cost. Absolutely. Absolutely. And uh, again, you know, I don't want to make this a whole daycare video because I'm, I'm assuming most people here don't really care about daycares because I didn't even care about them until I had a daughter. And now I love them and want to create one for her and hire people to work there. But um, also uh, the state will give you money for kids. Um, you know, they, they could be low income kids. You can do like a four year old program where you prepare them for school and, and, uh, and get money from the state as well. So there's a lot of different avenues to make money from daycares. They can make money before they open. You can make money even if the parents don't have the money to pay what it is that you want to uh, make off of that kid if they're low income. Uh, you can let kids come for free and teach them, prepare them for you know kindergarten, first grade, whatever, and get paid from the state that way. So it's just a lot of different ways that daycares can bring in money. Man, shoot, the daycare that my daughter is in now, while we're looking for her one, they do fundraisers, right? They do pageants. Right. All of that stuff. So the sky's the limit. If, you know, child care centers interest you again, I do understand that's not going to be an interest to everybody. Congratulations. Appreciate that. In addition, child care homes can get a lot of government support in the form of grants and low interest loans with long repayment terms. Absolutely. That's great. Hello from Washington, D.C. Great information, bro. You selling junk? No. Who, who would buy junk? No, we're not selling junk. Uh, her reselling business sells her clothes. Uh, so for the benefit of the people that just tuned in, we'll reiterate it again uh, briefly. So um, I buy my daughter a lot of clothes, shoes, junk uh, like that. You know what I mean? So not saying junk like, you know what I mean, trash, but uh, a lot of high end clothes and stuff like that. Right. My whole f philosophy, not saying that. Uh, you're a bad parent if you don't do this. Not saying that I'm a good parent by doing this, but just my philosophy is. 
I buy my daughter a lot of nice stuff. I teach her how to be a good person. So when she's of age, you know, uh, she's going to be interested in men. I don't want her to be, but I know that that's inevitable, right? So she's going to be interested in uh, young men when she gets a certain age. But what I do want uh, her to, to always know is that, you know, be interested in young men that are genuinely good people, not the, the guy that uh, takes you to a nice restaurant buys you an outfit, buys you a purse, right? So uh, my personal philosophy is, you know, she's going to have all of that stuff. So none of that stuff is going to be impressive. That's going to be regular. You know, she has $100 true religion outfits now and new shoes and new clothes and all of that stuff. So by the time she is, I don't know what age uh, kids start getting interested in uh, kids of the opposite gender. But, um, you know, she's going to be interested in actually a good young man and not just a young man with money. So, uh, but due to the fact that she grows so fast at this age, uh, she might wear an outfit once. She's even has outfits that, you know, she didn't even have a chance to wear the tag still on them. And we just resell those. So it's polo, true religion. Uh, I don't even know all the brands, but she got a bunch of brands, more brands than I have and a bunch of shoes that are in great condition. They're just no longer her size. So we resell those things. Right. So anybody with small kids can relate to the fact that, you know, kids grow fast at a young age. So toys that are in good condition that she no longer plays with. She has her own Macari store. Uh, Macari, if you don't know, is like eBay and Amazon, but it's smaller, smaller than those. But uh, she has her own Macari store where she sells nice clothes, toys, and shoes predominantly. Um, be smart and pay close attention to this brother because he's dropping a lot of nuggets that I know many people are not taking seriously. Absolutely. Absolutely. So, I mean, you know, hopefully I could just expose somebody to it. And again, um, I'm, I'm not, uh, there was a time that I was trying to convince everybody to believe what I'm saying, but now I'm, I'm realistic enough to understand that uh, everybody's not going to believe it. Some people's going to say it's a scam. It's not possible. Things of that nature. So now I'm understanding that I'm just going to put out the information and, you know, when the student is ready, the teacher will appear. So hopefully they'll stumble across this video when they're ready for it and when it makes sense to them. Because right now, if you're struggling financially and it's hard for you to just uh, take care of your kids, it may be impossible to say that your your five year old can make forty thousand dollars a year. If you're not even making forty thousand dollars a year and you don't know, you know, uh, how, how you're going to make it through the next month much less set your kids up. So again, I understand. I empathize with that. I come from a low income family myself and, uh, you know, on one side and the other side were entrepreneurs. Right. So I do empathize with you on that. But, you know, this is possible. This is possible. It does take sacrifice. Uh, you're going to have to invest your own money. Nobody likes to uh, lose money and you won't always lose money. Right. Lots of times people have you thinking you always lose money uh, if you try to be an entrepreneur. Right. There's going to be a learning curve. Right. You don't know what you don't know, as the old adage goes. So there's going to be a learning curve. You're going to make educated uh, risk because you're going to educate yourself, especially if you watch this channel. I always tell you, watch my videos. Go watch other people's videos. Listen to blogs. I mean, listen to uh uh, podcasts, read blogs, right? So you don't have to just take JT's word for it, right? Just because JT says that a daycare center is a good business, you know, you can check out other people, right? Maybe, uh, maybe it's not for you, right? So definitely do your due diligence, make educated uh, risk, and you're not going to always lose money, right? You're going to get over that learning curve and, right, you're going to be making money. Oh, my God, you're such an inspiration. Keep up the good work. Thank you, sir. No problem. Appreciate you tuning in, Omar. Appreciate all 55 people that's here. If you haven't done so already, uh, please hit that thumbs up button. Comment where you're watching this from. Again, in this video, I'm just sharing with you guys my situation. Not saying that you have to do it. If you want to do it, it's possible anywhere in the world to do. Uh, and, and if it's not of interest to you, just letting you know that it's possible. You can do something totally different with your kids and make money, right? So you're not limited by what I say or by what anybody says, but it is possible. That's the biggest takeaway from all of this. It's possible. If you don't like JT Hustle's way, it sounds stupid to you, do it your way, right? But it is possible. Uh, set up the people after you so that they can be better than you, right? We're not going to always be as young as we are now. We're not going to always have the energy that we have now. So while you are young and have the energy to do it, right, whether you're 20 or 50, right, because 50 is not old, right? So whether you're in your 20s or in your 50s, man, 
you know, utilize what energy and resources you do have to try to set up those that come after you. Is it possible to drive the different independent courier routes in a day for two different companies or can you only have one route per day? You can have multiple routes a day. All right. Uh, that's what my business did when we started off in Maryland, for sure. Right. We was running, um, I think, as many as three or four companies. It's been years ago now. But yeah, it's your own business. Right? It's your own business. So you can do whatever it is you want to do. Right. You can run for two companies, three companies. If time permits, scheduling permits, of course, there's different factors that go into play. So if times overlap and things of that nature, maybe not. But it's, it's your own business. There is no rules saying that you can't run for multiple companies. Right. So if time permits, space permits, things of that nature, it's your own business. You can absolutely do it. Proud of your visions. After that first breakthrough, we realize the sky is the limit. Absolutely. Absolutely. Long Beach, California. Shout out to you. Shout out to Burlington, New Jersey. Hi, bro. What's up, James Potts? Um, I'm ready to step out. How can one afford health insurance? Right. Me and Mike did a whole breakdown on that. Right. And I think what it is, is that once you educate yourself and you start, you know, making these risks, you lose money, you make money because everybody loses money. Right. Even the richest person, you know, has lost money at some point in time. So that shouldn't be a deterrent. That's just part of, you know, you learning the business, right? Um, you're going to make enough money, right? Right. Mike has a whole formula. It's in Hustle Academy. It's also on his channel. That's showing you guys. Uh, I think when I looked it up, a family of four, it was saying that it's only like $1,400 a month for health insurance. The problem is not that you're not going to have enough money if you do entrepreneurship the, the right way. The More so the problem is the mentality, right? Uh, because right now, if you're making fifty thousand dollars a year and your company is giving you health insurance you're feeling like if i quit my job and only made fifty thousand dollars a year i can't afford this health insurance but you got to understand that you're limited by that job to make only fifty thousand dollars a year last time i looked it up and it's been a little while now uh companies you know they they base your pay off of a lot of different things uh other people that's doing your job uh, in that area, you know, cost of living, stuff like that. One of the many factors is uh, lots of times they're going to make four to six times off of you. So if they pay you $50,000, the job that you do is probably going to make them at least $200,000. This is big companies, right? Small mom and pop companies make up their own numbers, talking about big companies. So really your value is more than what you see in your paycheck. But I think lots of times people think that, okay, uh, I only see this amount of money. So I don't see how I could pay my mortgage, pay my car insurance, take care of myself and my kids and pay for health insurance. If I had to all out of this pot of money, you got to understand that you're not in that pot of money no more. Right. So that's not even an issue. Again, educate yourself first on whatever business interests you. You can ease into it if you would like to. That's the comfortable way that I know a lot of people do. I personally did not. I quit my job cold turkey. Mike was fired and had to figure it out. So, But it works both ways, of course. So um, if you're somebody that wants to ease into it, ease into it, then transition. If you quit cold turkey like I did or you get fired like Mike was, you could still end up successful. So just start thinking about it differently, right? So um, you're not going to be pulling out of that same pot of money, right? As an entrepreneur, the pot is as big as you make it. So if you want to make more money, you can raise pro raise prices. You uh, expand the business, right? You can create another business, right? So the sky's the limit. And health insurance is going to be a non-issue for you at that point. Uh, where are we at? In the chat. Um, Ryan's kid review. They started him at two. His first vid, he just playing with some toys, a million reviews, man. What? Absolutely. So, yeah. So your kid can do uh, like if, if you think you got a funny kid or entertaining kid, you can start recording them on your cell phone and uh, make a YouTube channel. Right. You don't have to sell a product or service if that's not your personality type or something that's interests you. There's a lot of different ways you can get your kids out there uh, so that they can start making their own money. Right here from Pittsburgh, Pennsylvania. Shout out to you, Nene and Leah Bula. Can you be my mentor? Right. Currently, I am offering um consulting. Right. 
Uh, so I don't think I'm mentoring anybody because nobody has ever asked me. But right now I'm doing it for all the students that are actively taking courses inside Hustle Academy. It's over 200 of them there. And then I will be opening it back up. I used to do consulting. Um, you might could call it mentorship. I'm assuming, you know, the services that I offer my con uh, my consultants is uh, the same thing that I would do if I mentored somebody. Um, so I, I will be opening that back up in the future. Don't have an exact date yet right now. We're just trying to uh, build out Hustle Academy, help as many students that are actively taking courses to find success, whether they're doing the appliance repair, cell phone repair, writing a book. Um, and we have a course there that, that just teaches you how to structure your side hustle. So, you know, when to quit your job and things of that nature. And then behind the scenes, I'm working on other courses that we'll announce once they're out, because I do uh, I do know now that if I tell you, oh, we're going to have all these courses out. Right. It's going to put undue pressure on the situation. So and just know that more courses are coming out to help you in other ways to make money as well. So just stay tuned. Share this video with anybody you think it can help. Subscribe to the channel if you're new and appreciate all 64 people that's watching. If you're just checking in, please hit that thumbs up button. Comment where you're watching this from. Um, so yes, works uh Lorie Rhonda. The answer is yes, right? Um, if, if you don't want to take any classes at Hustle Academy, that's fine. Um, but it'll be not right now. Okay, so it's yes, but not right now, right? Um, awesome video. What carriers do you use uh for your courier service? Right, all of that is outlined for free in other YouTube videos. Also outlined here in my book. Um, if you're if you're talking about getting big mail contracts, uh, that's in my Patreon as well. It's two forms you got to fill out. Also, I want to let you guys know that um, last announcement that I saw come out, and again, um, you guys might uh, that do your due diligence because I know a lot of you guys do research as well. Uh, if you've seen a different date than I have, put it in the chat, or put it in the comment section. Uh, the the United States Postal Service wanted everybody to submit their stuff by the end of the fiscal year. So I'm thinking by the end of uh, next month, September. So um, if you're interested in getting a mail contract, right, the form is in my Patreon. I don't know if they already uh, have found somebody in your area. Keep that in mind. Like the, the United States Postal Service does not call JT Hustles and say, hey, we got these spots filled. Uh, but um, the forms are there if you are interested. Shout out to Mobile, Alabama, peace. And also the Hustle Time podcast, I have a whole podcast episode of me listing different courier companies that I've, I've worked with and my experience with them as well. Right. That's going to be exclusively uh, on, in the podcast to encourage you guys to go support me on the Hustle Time podcast. It's absolutely free to do. Listen to it on your car ride while you work out, whatever the case may be. Shout out to Columbia, South Carolina, Mobile, Alabama. What's good, JT? What's up, Darian Clark? Uh, can you help me with writing up my LLC? What, what you mean by writing up the LLC? Usually, and I've done this in Maryland and also in North Carolina, um, you got to go to your local business office and fill out a form and there's probably a fee. Uh, there is no flat fee. I've been um, as much as $400 when I was in Maryland. It was way less in North Carolina. So usually that fee depends on where you are, right? Um, but what you mean writing it up is uh, you fill out a form, you tell them what kind of business is going to be, things of that nature. And then uh, you pay a fee and they, they get you your LLC. I mean, your business license, right? They get you your business license. Uh, you register at irs.gov to get your EIN number for absolutely free. irs.gov. Uh, and, and it's step by step. You can Google in the, in the search bar, not Google, in the search bar, type in EIN or employment identification number, I think it stands for. And it'll walk you through that. So definitely um, you want to get that and use your EIN instead of your social. That's your business social. So, yeah, but as far as writing stuff up, let me know a little bit more what you mean by that. But to get an LLC, um, you get an EIN for absolutely free from the IRS. You go to the local business office and uh, and they'll ask you questions, have you fill out a form and then whatever their price is. Right. For you to get that business license and get set up uh, is usually all it is to it. Um, my wife wanted to do a daycare, but I told her she don't have the aptitude. Right. I mean, at, at two years old, I, I'm not saying that my daughter is the best as far as aptitude goes to run a daycare right now, but you can hire people. So if, if you're if your wife, let me make sure you say wife. Yeah. If, if your wife is interested in it, um, she doesn't have to run the daycare center like I'm going to buy the building. We'll rent the building first and then later we'll buy one if it uh, if, if everything goes well. But I'm going to rent buy the building, hire people to work there because I personally 
wouldn't want my daughter to go to a, a daycare field with me and running it. And I don't expect anybody else to, to think uh, to think of that as well. So and we're going to have mature women that have experience, have the proper training and defibrillators and CPR. And in my state, they actually offer that training for free. It costs you a weekend. That's all it costs you because they usually do the training um, for people that are in child care at different locations on the weekend. So uh, get these people trained up and have somebody else run it. So I'll uh, pay the money for it. It'll be my daughter's and neither one of us will run it. So if, if that is a passion of your wife, she can do it that way. She can learn the business. And when she does, uh, you know, feel like she has the aptitude to run it, then uh, then she can transition into it that way. Uh, let me see where we left off with it. Uh, shout out to Sumter. Shout out to Kelly in Texas. Um, I just bought gold for my children. That's dope. That's dope. Um, I use this site to put together my LLC documents and lease agreements. I believe it's a hundred a year, right? Oh yeah, if you're talking about lease agreements for like, I, I guess real estate. Um, right? Any idea or suggestion for creating board games, JT? Um, currently I don't. There is a gentleman. Um, man, Derek Grace too. Derek Grace too. He's really big on Instagram, but he does have a YouTube channel. He has his own board game from what I hear is doing very well. Um, and, and he probably will be the best person to tell you about board games. Derek Grace too, though. Uh, he's really big on Instagram, but he does have a YouTube channel. Right. And a very smart gentleman. I watch some of his videos and he'll probably be um, the, the, the biggest or the best resource for you, uh, to get that question answered. Uh, cause you know I mean? If I don't know, I'm gonna tell you, I don't know. I'm not going to try to right? like, like my grandma used to say, I'm not going to make a cornbread and tell you it's biscuits. Right. Um, the health insurance question was what I was working on. Absolutely. And I think that's all it is. I think lots of times people think of how I'm for health insurance, right? You're going to be making however much money you decide to make. So you're going to pay for it. Right. That's what your business does for you. So once you have your own business, that's what it's going to do. And and again, think about it as it's not you paying for health insurance. Right. So maybe now you don't pay for health insurance. The business that you work for pays for it. Right. Even when you transition, it's not you paying for health insurance. It's your customers paying your business. And then your business is now paying for you to still have health insurance. And again, you decide how big that is. Right. You decide how big your business is. If it's going to be a daycare center, if this daycare center reaches the max uh, that you can have legally, maybe you go rent out another building, you open up another building and you double your income or do whatever that way. If it's a courier service, maybe you invest in more trucks, uh, cargo vans, more people, whatever it is, right? So health insurance, right? Again, you got to just uh, think about it in a bigger way. Think about how would you afford health insurance if you have unlimited earning potential? Because in simplest terms, that's what entrepreneurship is, right? You decide what business you start. You decide what time you put in it, what resources you put in it. So in essence, you decide how much money it makes. So if you had unlimited earning potential, how would you pay for health insurance, right? You would just pay for it or have your business pay for it, right? Or one of your clients pay for it through their, you know, what, however you structure it. Uh, like Mike, me and Mike did a video on selling licenses that you can go watch on that. But uh, yeah, I, I think. I think that, you know, it is a real concern. I'm not trying to downplay anybody's concern. Health insurance is, is important, right? Uh, because it can get very expensive, right? But um, but just understanding that, you know, you're not pulling from that same pot of money, right? You're not pulling from the same $50,000 they're giving you on your job. You pulling from the pot that you made for yourself. And it's as big as you want. It makes whatever it is that, that you're willing to hustle for and educate yourself on. Right. Uh, the resale of clothing is a good idea. No different from Plato's closet where people take their gently worn clothes and get paid. Then play those closet up. Uh, then play those closet, resell them at a higher price. Absolutely. Absolutely. Thrift stores do that. Sometimes thrift stores get the clothes for free and then uh, resell them for for a, a, a profit as well. So definitely, man. And then uh, the old mentality generations before me. And uh, and if you can relate to this, I'm going to go ahead and give you a heads up uh, and know what you got to deal with. So like I said, uh, coming from a low income family, right? Um, how it worked is 
you got hand me down. So you you wore your cousin's old clothes and things like that. So if you couldn't afford it, you wore your siblings' old clothes, your cousin's old clothes, whatever the case may be. So if you make the shift and say, instead of just giving away these old clothes, I'm going to start setting up so that uh, these people that's coming after me can have more than I have. I'm going to start selling clothes. Not saying you got to sell them to your siblings or uh, to your cousins, but you just sell them online to whoever, right? Then the, the, the slack that you'll probably get, I got it. Other people have gotten it is, oh man, so-and-so needs some clothes and you selling clothes to, to somebody you don't even know, somebody out of the family, right? And you got to understand that, you know, what you're trying to do is set up future generations, right? And you can keep going down the course of just hand-me-downs and then it goes like that in perpetuity. Or you can say, I'm going to create a business and while I won't give my, my niece, nephews, cousins clothes, I will teach their parents how to do what I'm doing and I will teach them once they're of age how to, you know, lay down clothes, measure clothes, take pictures, everything that goes into reselling stuff on eBay, Macari, Poshmark, Amazon, wherever they decide to sell stuff at. So instead of just giving you the clothes, I'm going to give you the business that will fund the clothes that you can run for forever, right? And, and it all just comes to a mentality switch. So if you deal with that, same way that I had to deal with it, same way that other people have to deal with it, definitely, man, you just got to understand that, hey, instead of just, you know, giving you the fish, I'm going to give you the fishing boat and the fishing business. Right. And that's how we're going to progress as a family. And, and, you know, and the generations after them can do even more. I just gave my daughter a Macari store, which is basically free. Any of you guys can set up a Macari store and set your kids up selling the old clothes they have that are in good condition, shoes, toys, things of that nature. And even if you don't make a lot of money, it's something. It's more than if you just gave them away. Right. And then it's a start. And the better you get at reselling, the more money you will make. Right. Once you learn more and you'll just get better at it. Right. So definitely you'll progress in that. And that is honestly, in my opinion, going to help generations become better. Right. Instead of just giving people stuff for free and not teaching them anything, giving them businesses, giving them the resources and things of that nature. Right. Um, how did you actually set up and create your book with your daughter? Right. You you can type it up in Microsoft Word or in. um pages if you got a Mac computer, right? So you just type up the book, right? And, and and I think what it is, is that a lot of people definitely, like, they they make businesses to be astronomical because maybe you comparing yourself to Walmart, Apple, things of that nature, right? I have a cool whole course available in Hustle Academy. And simply, you could type it up in Microsoft Word, Microsoft uh, Word or pages, right? I keep forgetting pages and that's what I use, right? And then, there's different companies out there that you can use that'll publish it for you. You can publish it independently like I do, which is what the whole course is about in Hustle Academy if you care about that. And I have other videos talking about that. And then literally, you put her name on it. When the royalty comes, right, and again, right, I didn't name my daughter Baby Hustles. So, uh, and the reason why I'm making this point is because lots of times I, I have a lot of people saying, oh, I want to tell this story, but I don't want it to get back to me as the person that, that says it, right? Like, my, my legal last name is not Hustles. You can write books in whatever alias you want to. When you set it up, you're going to have to put in uh, payment information. Uh, it might be PayPal if you use some companies. More times than not, the companies that I know of, right, going through Amazon, um, it's going to be a uh, doggone routing number and bank account numbers. So if you're going to do it that way, you can say your name is Fred Flintstone. As long as you have your legal bank account number and routing number, that's how the money is going to get to you. So definitely, I publish all my books through Amazon. I type them up in pages because I have an Apple computer. Not saying you need an Apple computer. If you got Word on your computer, it works just as good. And the course that I have in Hustle Academy is uh, not just how to write the book, right? You can go on YouTube and learn how to write the book for free. But there's a difference between writing a book and writing a book that's actually people care about it. It resonates with people. It sells, right? So, and, and that's the whole point, right? You want to get your story out there. It doesn't have to be a business book, right? It could be like Harry Potter, right? Or it could be a romance novel, whatever it is. But you definitely want to reach people, impact them in a positive way. So, if you want to know about that, I think the link has been dropped uh, by BK uh, somewhere in the chat. And I'll also make sure that's down in the description below as well. And literally, as far as adding her, you just you just add her name. Um, and, and simple as that. 
Um, let me see. Dropping down. Columbia, South Carolina. It's the best way to market my skill trade for more clientele besides doing demos. What's your skill? What's your skill, Don Baba? Um, D Wayne from Spring Hill, Florida. Shout out to Spring Hill, Florida. Flow Town, South Carolina in the building. Florence, South Carolina. Listen, y'all have this to resonate with you more than anybody. Literally, the building that we're looking at is in your city. You might know the building that I'm talking about, right? So definitely Flow Town, South Carolina. If you have children, you know, I don't know if you do or not, um, and daycare centers interest you, right? 100%. Right. It's affordable in your area. Definite need in your area. Right. Uh, if the fire marshal turns me down, we might have to go look in Greenville or Columbia or uh, really parts of we could do North Carolina. But since the lady that uh, has been doing it so many years is doing it in South Carolina, we are looking in South Carolina because that's where we have the blueprint. But definitely um, for op agreement and leases and other documents by state. Yeah. So I, I think that's more like real estate. Uh, type stuff. And I definitely, uh, I am going to work on that. I have a thumb drive with a lot of those forms on it and I need to go ahead. And um, I haven't found a way that YouTube will allow me to upload like PDFs. So that's what I use Patreon for. So just like you can go to Patreon and get the forms for, uh, if you want to fill out the, to see if there is an opportunity still available in your area um, for the the highway contract routes, HCRs is what it's called. That's there. I'll probably go ahead and once I get time, update my Patreon with all of those forms too. And then um, and yeah, and that could be pretty much your database, right? If if those forms interest you, but um, I'll make a whole video on it at that time. So I'll make a whole video on it once I upload that stuff in the Patreon, and you guys will know what's in there and decide if you want to do that or if you want to invest in um what is it, maybe legal zoom. Is something else that I heard of. I haven't personally used, but a friend of mine uses it and, uh, and they like it so far. Uh, thanks for the LLC info. Been looking up on how to get one. Shout out to Mike Leonard. Hey, man. Uh, yo, Mike, we going to set up a business together, Mike, for you, for you and your family. Um, you know how to reach me. Uh, Mike Leonard is, is my dog, man, is my dog, man. Been with me for a long time. Drove trucks for me, drove vans for me. So, yeah, man, Mike, it's your time, man. We're going to set you up with a business and, and get you right. You know how to reach me. Shoot me a text. Um, You got the number. Um, Or you can hit me up through social media. It's whatever. But we're going to set you up. Um, All I need to know is what interests you, what interests you, what you want to set up for you and your kids. And, um, you know, what I mean, and it don't even got to be for YouTube. It ain't got to be YouTube videos on it. But, man, you've been rocking with me since day one. Day one, when I started my courier service, he was there five years ago. So, man, if you want to be on YouTube, we'll put you on YouTube. If not, man, anyway, man, I'm going to set you up, my dog. I got you. Um, I brought the board game. Cool, cool. What, let, let me know what you think of it, uh, Darian Clark. Let me know what you think. How how was um how was the board game? Um, Because people talk like it was dope. And we're talking about Derek Grace Tools board game. Very, very smart gentleman. Uh, he, he's on YouTube. He's on Instagram. Very smart gentleman, man. Um, watched his videos. Gives a lot of good game as well. Um, JT, do you have to pay Amazon to sell stuff on there? Yeah. Yeah, there's going to be fees in any platform, right? Um, like Amazon has something called FBA, uh, where basically you send stuff out to the warehouse, right? And then you pay a fee. They store it for you. They ship it out for you. All of that good stuff. So definitely, man, um, there is going to be fees, right? With eBay, totally going to spend 13%. 13%. 10% is the eBay fee. 10% of whatever money you make off of selling it plus shipping. 3% is the PayPal fee because the money is going to go directly to your PayPal. So 13% of whatever you make, if you sell on eBay, you're going to lose in fees plus shipping, right? Um, so shipping, depending on how you do it, really inexpensive. Um, and I personally recommend if you don't know what you're doing, charge the customer shipping anyway. So it really doesn't cost you anything because they pay for it. Right. So definitely. Um, there's going to be fees in pretty much every platform that I know of. There's going to be fees, whether it's Amazon, eBay or Macari. Right. Maybe Craigslist. Hold on. I take that back. Craigslist. Craigslist has fees for some things. Um, but, uh, you know, if you know how to finesse, I guess you can you can sell on Craigslist without a fee. 
and um, Facebook Marketplace. You can list there as well. So if you're looking for something that's specifically no fees, you're probably looking more so Craigslist, Facebook Marketplace. If you're not going to accept the payment through Facebook and things like that. But if you're going through the big ones, eBay, Amazon, there's fees. Um, Derek Grace too, right? Absolutely. Yep. Becoming a fisherman. Yep. Absolutely, man. Exactly. You can teach a child how to fish for a day or you can prepare themselves for a lifetime. All your ideas on point. Absolutely, man. Absolutely. And again, this is not no, right? Like I'm not no smarter than anybody out here. Never mind the businesses. Never mind the master's degree. Never mind none of that, right? I started the same place where, you know, most other people started. Low income, single family home, right? And, you know, you, you really have to want it. And if you want it, you educate yourself, you you try, you, you miss out, you learn from it, you don't give up, you stay consistent, and everybody can get to this level or 10 times past this level, right? So definitely. And Mike, if you're still in the chat, Mike, man, hit me up um, anytime today. Shoot me a text, uh, hit me through social media, it don't matter. Um, but yeah, man, let's set you up with a business, my dog. Because last I heard you was working a job, nothing wrong with working a job. If anybody's here working a job, you know, I'm not even going to try to get you to quit your job. But, um, uh, man, you've been with me for a long time, been with me for five years. And, uh, man, bro, it's time, it's time to set you up, bro. We're going to get you set up. Um, Collision repair and refinish. Absolutely, man. Absolutely. So how do you market collision repair and refinish, right, without doing demos, right? Well, Man, I think honestly, like a YouTube channel is, is gonna be my go-to. But um, what's what's the problem with demos, right? Um, so you got you got your own collision repair and refinishing business. Uh, people that buy into that, they're gonna want to see like before and after, uh, pics of it and or videos of it and things of that nature, right? So I think you're on the right track with demos, right? If you're doing stuff like that, um, do you know anywhere where a person can start? If they need illustrations for a book, Fiverr, F-I-V-E-R-R, F-I-V-E-R-R dot com, Fiverr dot com. Um, D-Ray, peace and love from Selma, Alabama. You're an inspiration to us all. Appreciate that. Milkman Trucker says hello. What's up, Milkman Trucker? That's great, bro. JT set up the brother, real recognized, real. Um, is dope. It helps you learn the game that we never taught. My kids enjoyed it, which was the key. Absolutely, absolutely. Word up. I was just checking them out. Salute. Shout out to Salute the Gen 110 writing a book, man. Hey, I'm going to read that book. I've got several books from you guys. I, I don't want you guys to think that I forgot about your books. I'm going to do book reviews on this channel uh, of your books, right? So don't think that if you sent me a book, it got thrown to the wayside, man. Uh, I, I got lots of you guys are entrepreneurs. You take in the game. You sending me books. The P.O. box is in my Instagram. I also put it down in the description below if you uh, want to send me um your book. I'm gonna read your book. I'll review it on the channel. And man, I'm all about entrepreneurship. Uh, somebody already sent me a book on traveling at a discount. Dope book. Somebody sent me a book on you know eating better. Right, great book. And uh, Jen's gonna give me a book about working out as well. Um, he's also an alumni of Plans Bootcamp. So once the book is finished, you guys will probably see a full video with him, him and his brother, rather. I uh, met his brother as well. Dope business going on. Um, so shout out to you, man, for being here. Cool content. Shout out to Engineering Cannabis. Uh, yeah, anybody that's interested in um, like a, a cannabis business at all, Engineering Cannabis, he's been on this channel couple of times more than likely if he's interested he'll be back on this channel again in the future and uh in, any questions you have i know that's big business right now you want to start a cannabis business he's definitely the guy for you um like share okay i'm mobile at the moment until i get my shop but more so serving used car dealerships demos absolutely man i don't know how you feel about youtube youtube has done amazing things for not just me but for many other people that uh, that don't mind being out there. So if, if you don't mind just using your phone, if you want to get a camera, you can. But I'm not saying you have to have one. But if you want to just start doing YouTube videos, listen, you'll do a YouTube video once. It'll market for you for years. I'm telling you, people are still watching uh, one of my first video. I think the third video I ever did was about me making $55 an hour using my friend's van as an independent courier. That was over 500 videos ago. I still get comments on that video every single day. So that video is still pushing people to my courier videos, 
uh, in, in entrepreneurship. So definitely, man, if you are somebody that's extroverted or even if you introverted, right, it's just you in the camera. Right. And, and if you want to disable comments on your videos because uh, you worry what people will say about you, that's perfectly fine. Dr. Phil does that all the time uh, on his YouTube channel. So I personally, man, uh, YouTube uh, will market your business in perpetuity over and over again. And, um, and you don't have to worry about going from place to place doing demos. And people will love that. If you want to be on this channel. Right. Reach out to me on Facebook. JT also is on Facebook. Let's do it. We'll do a live stream together for wherever you are, because I think that's a very interesting business to do mobile car detailing. If you don't mind sharing uh, people some insight on that, because I'm sure there's some people on this channel that may find that interesting and uh, want to get into it and get you out there and get your channel up and running. Um, I love the book reviews, love and life from Atlanta. Absolutely. Absolutely. And that'll be more so. I know. It's very important for people to start reading. Lots of times people don't have the time to read or they say they don't have the time, but that's a whole nother issue. But people say they don't have the time to read. And definitely, man, um, it's a lot of important information in books. Right. Well, what, what a book will do is fast forward you um, in time and save you a lot of money. Right. Because as an entrepreneur, when I first started out, I did a lot of stuff myself. Right. And then when I finally got into reading books. I might have been three years in right now. I'm five years in. If you, if you care to know, I was three years in. I'm start reading books and I'm like, oh, man, I know this, but I learned that because I lost twelve hundred dollars doing it another way that I thought made sense. But I just didn't know. You know, you don't know what you don't know as I, as the old adage goes. So by reading books, it'll avoid you making costly mistakes and you'll know what to do the right way. It doesn't matter what the wrong way is. There's a million wrong ways to do it, but you can go through trial and error and learn it that way. And it might cost you years and thousands of dollars, or you can read now. You can say, okay, this is how you do the business. I don't care what the wrong way is, but I'm going to start right here. Like I'm going to start right here with being an independent courier. I'm not going to go buy a minivan and start Googling companies and then start off that way, which, you know, you can and find companies. And then once you tear up your vehicle, spend a lot of money, do the math and say, hey, I'm not really making as much money as I should be making. Right. And then you learn everything or you can just read the book and say, OK, this is how I need to do it. I need to start with a cargo van. Right. It's going to give me more bang for my book. It's going to set me up. Right. This is how I automate the business. This is how I expand the business and things of that nature. Right. Um. How can I send you a T-shirt, bro, from my friend's business, right? Let me, I'll drop it in the chat right now. So here's my address for you guys to send whatever you want to send. So P.O. Box 72, Hammer, South Carolina, 29547, right? And it's also uh, in my in my Instagram as well. Um, follow me on Instagram. You guys ain't follow me on Instagram as well. Um, Cause that's really what what prompted this entire video, uh, the hate that I got on a recent Instagram picture. But I just wanted to address it to help people. Um, I'm mobile at the moment until I get my job. Yeah, we talked about that. Love the book reviews. Talked about that. Got the T-shirt out there. The online cell phone class was on point. I just completed it. Appreciate that, Darian Clark. So there's another testimony um, for those of you that are in the live chat. I don't know if people that see it after the fact can see the live chat. But um, but yeah, man, for anybody that's interested in doing anything that we offer here live, I know it's not feasible for everybody to get to North Carolina. So we are going to uh, start making whatever you can come live to and get hands-on training. There's going to be an online equivalent of it where it's the exact same information, right? If you come live, we provide cell phones. You take them apart. You put them back together. You learn everything here on site. If you can't do that, you still get all the information and, uh, and can run with it, right? We just can't feasibly send you every major appliance to your house and hope you send it back or send you multiple cell phones and hope you send it back, It'll be, right? But I'm sure most people understand that, right? Uh, can you give the name of the liquidation warehouse in North Carolina? You show Johnson County Liquidators. Right. Johnson County Liquidators is the name of it. Right. Um, oh, yes. Almost forgot that I wrote two books to the stock lord and the minimum wage millionaire like you. I self-published on Amazon. You're true. My brother. Keep it up, please. Absolutely. And shout out to Omar Lyons, man. And definitely, man, if you want to, P.O. Box is there. Like I said, uh, I'm going to 
Shoot, that's what I'm planning for the winter now, right? We already sold out of Pines Boot Camp. So uh, the, for the winter, I'm, I'm reading a lot of books. And uh, you guys will see it on this channel. Yes, leaders are readers. Absolutely. What's your size? Excel. Excel is the large. Went and got the skill trade, worked in the field for about five or 10 years, started doing side work, then wanted to be convenient. So I became mobile. So I got my shop that way. It's income on both sides. Absolutely, man. Smart business decision, Don Baba. Smart business decision, man. Leaders are readers. I love it. Salute. Absolutely. Um, your mobility may be a game changer since you're not bound to a brick and mortar location. Consider a beer, bigger vehicle. So it's just good networking going on now in the chat. So appreciate everybody that's here. Uh, shout out. If you're watching this in the U.S., internationally, I want you to know the content on this channel can help you no matter where you are. Uh, in the world and what it is that you want to achieve is possible. So I'm in North Carolina setting up my daughter. You can set up your daughter in Georgia. You can set up your daughter in Africa, in the UK, in India, wherever it is where, where you have children, right? You can definitely set them up if you want to use the example I gave with a child care center or any business. But until next time, so I'm a hustler, stay hustling. JT Hustles, I'm gone.